Hey guys, David Bieber here. Welcome back to the channel. And this is a bit of a follow-up to my last video where I compared the Neural DSP Morgan AC20 plugin with the real Morgan AC20 and the Fractal Audio FM3 model. Now, when I was doing that at the time, I did comment that it's perhaps a little bit of an unfair test as I was using mixed IRs and what have you. But also I noticed the Neural DSP plugin had way, way more gain than the real amp and the FM3 when all the dials were set in the same place. I speculated at the time that it could be that they'd modeled the EF86 channel of the AC20 Deluxe, which has a lot more gain, or maybe it's me doing something wrong with the input stage, the input gain I'm giving my audio interface. Now, it turns out that it was the latter. Now, after I finished that previous video, I went away for a two day break in the lakes with my wife. I'd scheduled it to upload. And whilst I was away on holiday, relaxing in the spa, browsing YouTube, I discovered a video by a guy named Ed Sokolowski, I think is the name, how you pronounce it. And this guy has gone really deep into the weeds of how to set up your interface with a perfect level. So the plugin is hearing the right amount of level. And he talks about this, or he goes through this in his video. I think it was a short I discovered first, but he does have a longer video. This kind of like blew my mind because I've always struggled with plugins. I've always wondered, am I getting the right amount of breakup? Is the amp sounding as it should do? Something in the back of my mind was, I couldn't really articulate it, but I always felt odd about plugging into my interface, setting an arbitrary amount of gain, and then that hitting the plugin. And it wasn't until I discovered Ed's videos where this all kind of started to make a little bit of sense. Now, I'm not gonna go into this massively because <laughs> I was chatting with my good buddy, John Cordy about this um, whilst I was away. And he's then gone and done a really great couple of videos on this and covered it. I'm not gonna go through that again here, but what I do wanna do is to illustrate and demonstrate the actual problem in con the context of my previous video. So the AC20, when I was setting it up in the neural plugin, had way more gain, and it was all to do with how I was hitting the, um, the input stage and where I'm setting, setting the knob. So what I'm gonna do is just now dive into the actual um, logic project and the interface and show you, demonstrate this clearly what's going on. Okay, so in my previous video, I was using at the time recording with a PreSonus 1824C, which is just out of sight down here somewhere. Now, um, I was going into the high Z input channel one, and I was aiming for between minus 14 and minus nine dB on the actual meter. It does have like a you know, segmented green, amber, red LED meter for each channel. And so I was aiming between that, uh, what is it actually? It's like, my, uh, on mine it's reading minus 18 to minus 12. So I was sort of in between there when I recorded that previous video. That's what's recommended by a lot of the uh, plugin company's official documentation. The other thing that they say to do, and this is very, very common practice, of course, is to get as much signal to no signal as you can, all the way up to clipping, and then back it off. So you want as much good, healthy signal as you can without it clipping. Now, when you do that, as I was, as I used to do, and then in the last video's case, was specifically targeting that sort of minus fourteen area. It's still way too much signal for the plugin. So when I was setting the plug into the same uh, position, the dial positions as the real amp and the FM3, there was so much signal being effectively, I can have a massive boost pedal on my signal going into the front end of the virtual amp, the, the neural plugin, that it was just over giving you way too much saturation, way too much drive. So I'm gonna demonstrate that now and show you the difference. But actually, instead of using the pre-Sonus, I'm gonna be using this Tascam uh, Series 208i. The reason for that, it was recommended to me from Ed uh, to because this actually matches the target dB that Neural are aiming for, this 12.2 number that Cordy will have talked about. So I'm gonna show you the difference by having the gain rolled all the way off and then up to where it's clipping. So I've set up a new Logic project and I've got this track here for Neural DSP. This is gonna be the um, AC20 plugin. And then this track down here is gonna be the comparison reference with the FM3 and real amp. I'm only actually gonna use the FM3. We'd established in the previous video that the FM3 and the real amp are virtually identical with the knobs in the same place. So just for ease of cabling and setup, I'm only doing it with the FM3 and the neural plug in here. 
And the first thing we're going to do is record a reference with the FM3. So I know that's accurate, I know what it should sound like and where it should break up with. I'll just load up FM3 edit so you can see the settings here. So this is the amp, the Morgan AC20 12AX7 treble channel. So the bright switch is on, the high cut's right at noon, and the gain is at say one o'clock, sort of six-ish on the, the, the setting there. And it gives me this first jangly clean sound that I had. All right, switching back over to the Neural DSP plugin, I'm gonna set up the controls on the amp exactly the same. So the cut was at noon, the volume was around there, wasn't it? So one o'clock, six-ish. So those are the same, and I've even set up the cab or the IRs exactly the same as well. So although it's different technology, different, etc., they are the same mics on the, I've got a ribbon and a condenser, the distance, position, distance, position, distance, this is all the same as the Dynacab in the FM3 section. So I've got ribbon, condenser, position, this is all set up the same. So it is apples to apples, albeit different technology. So if I now go over to the Tascam and set my gain, so this is what I was doing on the previous video, but albeit the previous Sonus. I've taken off the audio input monitoring for now. I just want you to focus on the signal and the peak light on the task scam, and I'm gonna set the gain how I usually would, or how it's recommended by so many people, neural, etc. So I'm gonna strum the guitar. You can see the signal coming in, and I'm gonna bring the gain up. So that was at zero, but I'm gonna bring it up until it clips. Okay, so it's clipping there, you can see. Strumming the guitar on the bridge pickup. Ah, now on the bridge pickup. It's a little bit louder. So when I'm hitting it hard, just getting some peaking. So I'm gonna back that off. Again, just following the old folk wisdom that this is. Very useful on older analog equipment, I guess was the point. And I'm now backed off to, I don't know where that is on the get control number, I can't actually see. Uh, okay, so it's just below 12 o'clock. That's still clipping, so I'm gonna keep taking it back. Really don't want any clipping, of course. And then I'm gonna take it back a little bit more even. So it's now really healthy signal to noise ratio, the thing we're all told to do and aim for when we're recording with microphones or in the old analog world, etc. But now if I turn on the input monitoring, in the, in the neural. Remember I've got the settings in the exactly the same place. If we listen to how broken up the amp is, so if we listen to how broken up the amp is with the FM3 at these settings, and now I play the same part again with the neural plugin, having gain stage my input to this, listen to what we get. That's the problem. That in a nutshell, hopefully is clearly demonstrating the problem and what Cordy's on about, what Ed's videos are on about. I'm way above the target reference point for what the plugin is expecting to hear. So now I'm looking at those settings on the amp, on the, the plugin, and it's nowhere near representative of what the real amp does. When I plug this guitar into that amplifier with these pickups and I put the controls like this, it doesn't sound like that. So I'll just play it again back to back so you can really hear the difference. Now this is the FM3 and what the real amp would be at these settings. So that's that nice jangly, just sort of on the, just starting to get a bit of break up, a bit of hair. And here is the Neural DSP plugging at those same settings, having incorrectly gain staged by effectively massively throwing a massive boost into the amp. Here it is. It's not the same, it's not even remotely close. And that's what I was experiencing in that previous video. So the solution is, as Ed says, and as Cordy said, to turn down your gain on your input all the way to zero. Now the Tascam is already, when you turn it all the way off to zero, it's already at 12.2 and it's gonna be giving the plugin exactly what it wants, so I'm told. And the same I think goes for the Universal Audio stuff and the focus right stuff. And I think um, that's what 
they the neural and other companies kind of shoot for because they're such big popular interface brands focus right in ua if you turn the gain all the way off and leave the neural input plugin at zero it should be exactly right it should be the, the same as what the reference the target level of the plugin engineers were, were aiming for so now i'm going to play through the neural plugin at those same settings that are used on the fm3 and the rear lamp and with the input gain staged correctly turn it all the way off and the input set to zero on the plugin, I get this. Much, much closer to what I would expect the amp to break up like at those, those settings. And it sounds very similar to the FN3 version. And this was the original FN3 we recorded. them back to back obviously there's a slight tonal difference because the cap technology is is is, is different but the actual amp itself is breaking up at the right point now it's so that to me is an absolute game changer because now i know that this plugin is going to respond and feel the same and sound the same as how I know the real amp to be and how other models are to be. So I'll do a couple more examples. I'll do the rhythm sound and then the lead sound as well. And you'll see it's much, much closer. <laughs> And with the neural DSP plugging, with the gain incorrectly staged. Just put the gain control to zero. And record that one more time. So we've got the FM3. Then the neural DSP plugin with incorrectly gain staged. Then correctly gain staged. Playing that back to back with the FM3. That's much closer. Slightly darker on the neural plugin. That's just going to be the cab technology. But the point is, the amp is breaking up and responding in the same way when the dials are set to the same position. Just wanted to mention a couple of other things. I'd noticed in the comments to Cordy's videos and some of the online discussion, people asking, like, well, why is this a big deal? If it sounds good, it is good. Just roll with it. Absolutely, that's totally cool and that's totally true. Uh, but when you're being sold a plugin that's based on a real thing and it's supposed to be accurate and it's claimed to be that way, I don't know, part of me just wants to feel like I'm actually getting a good close representative um, sound as to what the actual app might be or what the claims are being made by about the plugin are. If we're not getting the right stuff going into it, it could be completely way off. So the whole thing then seems kind of moot and irrelevant like you can spend all this time making the plugin look exactly like with photorealistic um you know skin of it skeuomorphic design uh, and then you set the dials and it's on the plugin and it's completely it doesn't sound anything like it that to me always sounded weird i've been doing it wrong all this time cord has been doing it wrong we chatted on the guitar Hour podcast the other night with tom quayle retchel we've we've all been doing this wrong in terms of how we are and hitting the, the, the plugin. And that just about wraps things up. I'm really glad for this journey of, of the last week because it shed new light on the whole plugin experience. And I've definitely got some newfound interest in things like the Neural Suite and the Helix Native and, and various things because um, I don't, I think I have a much greater understanding now of how to actually go about getting the best from them. 
I do think there needs to be some clarity from the manufa- from the developers of these plugins. Uh, maybe it's not wanting to scare people off with having to figure out their technical specifications of their interface. Um, but I think in the long run, it's probably for the best because I've definitely been put off and I'm not completely stupid. Um, it's debatable, I know, my wife might say, but uh, you know, I, I, I just think I've just been reluctant to actually put the energy and and into figuring this stuff out for myself. There's like a barrier resistance. So I'd rather just go straight into a modeler because that obviously that does all the work for you. If you think about it, when you plug into a Helix or you plug into a fractal unit, you're not setting the input gain, it just does it. Yeah, there's a pad, you can pad stuff, but you know, you don't you don't have to think about that. And obviously the, the input of the hardware modeler is sending the right amount of expected signal to the models within it. Um, and so that resistance has always been there for, for me with plugins in the past. And I feel like that's been lifted somewhat. So I'm really thankful to, um, well, as always, chatting with Cordy and these subject matters. And yeah, super thankful to Ed uh, for putting the work into kind of shedding some light on this subject and hopefully making plugins more useful for me and more of a desirable option to explore in the future. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you find that useful. If you have, then leave it a like and subscribe to the channel. And if you've got any questions or you've got anything else you'd like me to test or talk about, then drop it in the comments. Thanks again for watching. My name's David Beebe, and yeah, catch you next time. Bye.